Dad, what are you doing in the car? We're supposed to be playing basketball. I'm playing this game. Look at this thing. Isn't this cool? Look. Huh? Alright, you want to play basketball? Yeah. I get ball first. No. What if I beat you at that game? Then can I have ball first? You beat me at this game, you get ball first. Okay. You're done. Donezo. Let's go. Alright. Alright, you ready? Yeah. So Tesla just came out with an update and it's got arcade games on it. All right, so before I get to the race between my son and I and the Tesla Model 3 Racing Beach Buggy 2, a few weeks ago I teased out that I was thinking about getting a brand new Tesla Model S after it ran 10.5 in the quarter mile. Tesla was offering free ludicrous. I went over the trading numbers and how much was it going to cost me to get that new Model S. And I declined to get the new Model S. I decided to wait for the refresh and instead go with a brand new Tesla Model 3 Performance and then kept the Model S. I ended up trading our Tesla Model X and for this car, I'm gonna go through all the numbers of what it cost me to get this car. I'm gonna do some zero to 60 performance testing, check out sentry mode and some of the unique features of this car. And then of course do some benchmark testing, trying to get that zero to 60 time down below three seconds. All right, so real quick overview of the spec. This is the Tesla Model 3 uh, with the dual motors all-wheel drive and performance. This has the upgraded 20-inch wheels, upgraded suspension, upgraded brakes. The rest of the car is pretty standard. We got the black interior here. Very simple, very simple inside. Black interior, got the 15-inch display in the middle there. Back seats are really, really big. I mean, I think there's almost as much room in here as there is in my Model S. Of course, the trunk's a little bit smaller because it's not a hatchback, but the seats do fold down. Uh, the newer Model 3 Performance has actually come with this carbon fiber spoiler as well, as well as the dual motor badging here in the back. All right, so first I'm going to go over the numbers, then I'm going to get into the performance testing, what I like and don't like about the car, and then give it the drag time score, and then get into Bryce and I racing Beach Buggy 2 on the new arcade game in the Tesla Model 3, as well as some of the other newer Teslas. All right, so first up, this is the Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor performance. Uh, base price is 35,400. They charge 24,500 for the long range and the all wheel drive and the performance. Uh, pearl white paint is another $1,500 as you can see here. And then I added the full self-driving capability for $6,000. Now, usually I don't add that, but Tesla's split up the driving features to where I wanted some of those advanced features that are now, and you don't get that with the base. All Model 3s now come with autopilot base, but some of the more advanced features like auto lane changing and navigate on autopilot do not come with that anymore. So I really wanted to play with those features and as well as be prepared for later on this year when they start rolling out some, more, some of the more advanced features. So I added that for $6,000. So total price of the car came out to $67,400. They had a destination fee of eleven. dollars hundred and twenty five dollars in a documentation fee for a grand total of sixty eight thousand six hundred dollars so what really triggered me to buy this car on the fast track was that uh, as part of the referral program Tesla owes me four power walls and that's from years ago I still haven't come about and been able to get those finally Tesla started coming around and we started doing permits and homeowners approvals and all these different things for the power walls 
And it turned out with not having solar at the house, not wanting to invest in solar, I felt like it really just didn't make sense for me to take the Powerwall. So there was an option to take credits for Tesla products in lieu of the Powerwalls. Now that had to be used by the end of the year. And it turns out I had $25,000 worth of Powerwall credits to use towards a new car. That combined with the tax credit of $37.50 expiring at the end of this month really triggered me to get a Tesla. And then I had to decide between the new Model S and the Model 3. I felt like the refresh of the Model S was coming out soon. I didn't want to buy a brand new Model S and then be having to deal with a new one coming out and selling that and getting the new one. Now we did have the Tesla Model X 100D that we've had for a couple years and we really didn't need that seven seat capability anymore. And with the Model X possibly being refreshed as well, I felt like the X was gonna lose a lot of value in the next six months. The Model 3 is a much safer bet for me because it just came out and I felt like it was gonna lose less value. So even if I have the Model 3 for a little while and then trade off for the new S and the new X, I think it was a better decision. So here are the numbers. $68,600 for the Tesla Model 3. I have $25,000. $500 in credit from Tesla. That brings it down to $43,100. There's a couple of fees here that you can see. Uh, there was a deposit I put down at $2,500. Now for the Model X, it had about 37,000 miles. They gave me $63,900 on trade for that. So if you look at all the numbers and how it came out to be, I'm getting a check back for $23,000 to me from Tesla for a brand new Model 3 trading in the Model X. Now, of course, I put 2,500 down, so that comes out to 20,500, uh, 20, but you gotta add back in that 3,750 from the government. So total cash back to me is $24,281. So I traded in the Model X, got a brand new Tesla Model 3 performance all-wheel drive, and I get $24,281. So I just, I had to use the Tesla credits. I wanted to get the full tax rebate and I wanted a new car. I wanted to play with all the new features they don't have. Sentry mode, the dash cam, all the advanced autopilot features, as well as test out the Model 3 against a performance car. So we're gonna do some racing soon with this car. But let's move on to some of the testing that we did. I really, really wanted to get zero to 60 in under three seconds. And I tried all the different modes in this car. You can just stomp on it, and it did zero to 60 in three seconds. And then there's track mode, zero to 60 in three seconds. Then you can try and power brake it. That doesn't work in normal mode. It, it comes up with an error message saying that you can't depress both pedals and motor power is reduced. But you can power brake it with, in track mode, but it still doesn't work. It comes off a little sluggish and still zero to 60 in three seconds. So no matter what I tried, I tried it with the V-Box, I tried it with the Draggy, I tried it with slip mode, no slip mode, track mode, track mode this, every mode, and the car's just dead consistent. Sixty. Same three point one seconds. But in this first case, I'm just gonna stab on it. Here we go. It feels good, solid. There we go. Six. Same thing. Three point one seconds with slip start. Track mode with a quick, quick preload before the car figures out what I'm doing. No, it does the same thing. It just bogs down a quick second. Really hard to get that right. So as you can see, it really doesn't matter what you do. This car is going to do zero to 60 in three seconds flat. Best, I think, on the drag, it was 3.03 with the rollout. Best on the V-Box, 3.05. I really feel like this car's got more in it. It just, you know, it doesn't heat up the battery. It doesn't have a ludicrous launch mode. It doesn't buckle down like the Tesla Model S or Model X do with ludicrous mode. I think it's just one software update away from coming off zero to 60 in 2.8, 2.9 seconds 
easily. So hopefully Tesla sends out that update and we get the additional power, or at least a little additional grunt off the line. Now a quarter mile of this car came in on the V-Box at 11.6 at 115 miles an hour or so. So I feel like with a little more on the launch, this car could go low 11s as it sits with just a software upgrade. All right, so on to what I like about this car. I really like everything about it. It is lighter than the Model S. It's more nimble. It handles better. I like the interior. It's, it's a lot easier. The, the wide 15-inch screen's easier to see than the 17-inch screen because you're not looking down at the 17-inch screen. My only kind of drawback that, you know, I wish it was faster. I wish it ran mid-10s just like the Model S did, and it would be the perfect car. So as an everyday car for me, I really like that extra grunt and that extra pulling power that the Model S has. This car is actually more fun to drive than the Model S 100%. Of course, one drawback is this does not come with free supercharging. I don't really supercharge that much, but with referring myself for this car as part of the Tesla referral program, I actually got... 2,000 free supercharging miles. And I was not really clear on what that meant. Does that mean for the first 2,000 miles I get unlimited supercharging? Or did it mean as I charged and pick up kilowatt hours in the car, they were gonna deduct the mileage? So I took a trip to the supercharger around the corner for me, plugged in, and this is what I found out. So I plugged it in for a little while. I picked up 19 kilowatt hours. Tesla said it charged me $4.18. And if I switched to the miles, it said I got 78 miles for that. So that's, they were charging me 22 cents per kilowatt hour. Now Tesla says they're only supposed to charge you the going rate. That's almost double the going rate for what I paid down here in Florida. So maybe that was the case before. Not the, not the case now. 22 cents for us is pretty expensive. Nevertheless, it's still pretty cheap to fill it up. Now when I went and logged back into the app to see what happened with my 2000 supercharger miles, it deducted about 50 miles. So basically they're doing some kind of conversion to deduct those miles and you can use those 2000 supercharger miles uh, until you fill them up. So for the value of the referral program, I feel like it's just about nothing. I think when I did the calculation, those 2000 free supercharg supercharging miles is worth about $163. Now, the advantage of the Tesla Model 3 over the Model S for supercharging is it can charge much, much faster. Uh, I wasn't low on battery, and I don't think I was at one of the fast supercharger stations. The max was 150 kilowatt hours, uh, so I wasn't charging as fast as the car is capable of. Nevertheless, no free supercharging drawback, but faster supercharging is definitely a plus in this car, and it's cheap anyways. I don't see a real big deal about the free supercharging. Another thing I really love about this car, it is really, really got some cool advanced stuff that I didn't have in my other cars. This has sentry mode. So when you're parked, you put a USB drive in the car, and as soon as someone walks around the car, it starts recording to the USB drive, and it comes up on the screen that says sentry mode activated. So if someone's looking into your car, it actually tells them that this car is recording you at all times. Super cool, and it's also got built-in dash cam with the three cameras, so it records that to the USB drive as well. Just press the camera icon in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, downloads the data of that USB drive, and you can check it out later. So what actually happened here is I used sentry mode to record me where I couldn't get into the car. So this is kind of a drawback that I feel like, you know, the Model 3 uses your phone's Bluetooth connection as the key. And if that's not ready for prime time, Tesla just shouldn't put it in there. Uh, you can see right here, I walked up to the car in the pouring rain, the key didn't work, sentry mode was recording, and I got stuck out there trying to get in that car. I couldn't get in. I had to walk back under some shelter of the house, uh, open up the app, go in there, and actually hit unlock, come back to the car to get in. So Tesla does offer a key fob option. However, it doesn't work like the other Teslas where you just walk up and get in the car. You actually have to get that key out and press unlock. So Tesla, you really got to get this together. If you don't expect people to use their phones as a key, it's got to work every time. Hopefully they get that fixed in a software update or give us an option for a passive key entry, which is the key fob. I would gladly spend the money on the key fob if it would work just like the rest of the Teslas do. All right, so on to the drag time score. First, we got launch zero to 60, three seconds flat in this car every single time, no matter what, even in the wet and the rain. This car does zero to 60 in three seconds with its super advanced all wheel drive. 100 miles an hour came in at 8.1 seconds, not great. Definitely starts to fall from the top end. I've give, I give that a score of seven. Top end speed, quarter mile came in at about 116 miles an hour. Decent, not great, not great. I gave that a six on TV quarter mile ET, 1163 in the quarter mile. I'm pretty sure we can get this in 11.5s. That's pretty good. It'll do that all day long and we'll compete with 
some other pretty cool cars. I'm, I got some ideas that I want to race this against, and uh, I'm going to hit the track pretty soon and line those races up. So quarter mile ET, I give that a seven. Roll racing, not great. This thing takes forever on the top end, just like, just typical of Tesla's. Uh, 6130 came in over 12 seconds. I give that a five. You're not roll racing anybody in this car. Uh, transmission, well, there's no transmission, and I give that a 10. No transmissions. Better than a transmission. There's no shifting, no delays. Instant torque at any time. 10 out of 10. Aerodynamics, uh, I don't know. It's passive. The car looks pretty aero. I mean, Tesla always does a good job of keeping aerodynamics in check to make sure these cars are super efficient. I give that a 7. On to sound. Well, this is an interesting benchmark for a Tesla. It doesn't make any sound. You can't give it a 0 because no sound is somewhat okay for being quiet and not noisy. I'm going to split it down the middle and just give it a 5. Handling, this thing handles really well, way better than the Tesla Model S. It's got all-wheel drive, it feels light and nimble, it's got instant torque everywhere you go. However, it's not like, you know, an M3 or uh, a really, really sport-tuned car, even though it does have upgraded suspension, upgraded brakes, and larger wheels. I give it a 7 out of 10. Practicality, car has good storage, plenty of room in the back seats. Uh, it's got the front in the front in the front, it's got the a decent sized trunk the, the seats fold down it's got like a recessed area in the bottom where you can store even some more stuff practicality this car does everything really well you got the supercharger network you can travel the country with it i give that a nine out of ten on to the cost this car comes in at sixty eight thousand dollars you don't have to get the autopilot that brings it down to like sixty two thousand dollars i think that's a bargain for what you get here you get one of the most advanced cars on the road you get uh, instant torque, great acceleration, all-wheel drive. Uh, so I give this, you know, it's a bargain, I think, for this Tesla Model 3. I give that a 9 out of 10. So you add up all those scores, what do you get? You get a score of 72. It just edged out the BMW 850i score that I did a few weeks ago. Uh, let me know what you think we should race this against. I did race the Model 3 Performance against the M3 a while ago, but uh, I think there should be some more interesting races coming up. Now that I have it in my garage, leave me a lot more flexibility than trying to gather together other cars, uh, other Model 3 owners to race other people as well. I did get a note from a Tesla Model X long range performance, the Raven model with everything loaded up. And I think we're gonna bring that out with this car and hopefully get a new Model X record as well. If the Model X picks up as much as the Model S did with this latest update, I think there's a good possibility we could get the world's first 10 second all stock SUV. As for the garage update, right now we have the old Ford GT, the new Ford GT, my Tesla Model S, P100D, the Tesla Model 3, all-wheel drive performance, and we have the McLaren 720S, which is currently in for service. Next up, I'm thinking about maybe trading the 720S for the 720S Spider, and possibly trading the Huracan up above me here for the Huracan Evo. I'm heading out to drive the Evo later this week, and uh, depending on how my impressions go, We'll see if uh, that's in the future as well. So thanks for watching. And here is me and my son racing Beach Buggy 2 in the Tesla Model 3. We'll see if he beats me. Thanks for watching. This is called wow. Beach Buggy 2, I think. And it's got two player mode. I'm gonna use the steering wheel and the gas and the brake, like the real. And then you're gonna use the uh, controls on the screen. All right. All right, you're going down. You ready? We'll see about that. All right, so restart. No, wait, hold on. I gotta start a new race. How do I quit? All right, so quit. Two players. Two players. I'm gonna be this dude. You wanna be the girl? Not really. Okay, all right, you be the dude too. Continue. Performance, chill, or ludicrous? Uh, I think that's the track times. Performance? Uh, sure. Okay, now let's do ludicrous. Oh, okay. Okay. Loading up. All right, so I use this. You, that's left and right for you. That's the brake, and then those are your special features. You ready? Special Go. Features. No, left, right. I'm doing left, right. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Ooh. What is that? Ooh. No. Did you shock me? I didn't shock you. Shock Why am I in a ball? Did you just pass me? Oh, I, I did that to you. You passed me. All right, I'm coming after you. Oh, I did? Oh. <laughs> no, rocket. No, don't. Dude. All right, are you beating me? I don't know. I'm in sixth place. You're in fifth. All right, I'm gonna get you. I'm catching up, catching up. No, no, no. Ooh, I'm about Eat. to pass you. <laughs> I got something mm. special for you. Yeet. I got bees. 
What was that? I shocked the person in front of me. Alright, I passed you. I passed you. You're in last place now. Ooh, you just passed me. Oh, I got slicked! What's no, on? dude, no! Yes. <laughs> dude, I can't control it now. Ooh, those are thumbtacks. Alright, alright, alright. What is this to? Oh! I'm going really fast. You just caught me on fire. What does that do? Oh, you gotta power up everything. You gotta catch those things. Yeah, you didn't. What am I supposed to do here? I don't know. Do that. Uh, you're in fourth place already? How are you still in sixth? Oh, now I'm in fifth. Oh, I just killed that person by accident. Lap two, lap two, uh, two, two. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just spamming. Angel. I don't know what that does. Oh, I'm shooting stuff. Don't what hurt. What does this do? I wanna go faster. Ah, what is this? Please do something good. Oh, Ooh, I got that. Rockets? Oh, I have rockets. Save onto those. Uh, I got four Race any. Woo! You won? Well, no, you have to go. You, have to come you still gotta go. Oh, I didn't even finish yet. There, now you finish. Woo! So I go ball first. You won. Good job, bud. Yeah. Alright, let's play some basketball. But it's raining now. Aww. Alright. We'll play in a little bit. All right, so you won. What did you think of the game? I thought it was pretty dope, right? <laughs> Bryce, the game was lit. Where are you going? Dude, come back. Come on.